Local adjustments are a great way to manipulate the light of your photos. So let me show you how to make your photos pop with the three local adjustments. The three main ones are the graduated filter, the radial filter and the brush. So here is how I use a radial filter for portraits. After doing all the basic corrections and getting the colors that I want, I wanna direct everybody's attention to the subject face. So if I go to the circle up here, get in the radial filter, I'm going to just drag a circle around her face like this. And then I can increase the brightness ever so slightly of her face. However, I don't just stop there. I create another radial gradient, the same thing as before. I right click in the middle and I click invert. And you see it shows us the area that's going to be highlighted, which I can take off by pressing O on the keyboard. And what I do now is I actually reduce the exposure around the image ever so slightly. And you see what that does is it's creating a gradient around her face. Now this doesn't only apply to portraits, anything that has a focal point, you can use a radio filter to create a vignette that draws your eye towards it. The graduated or gradient filter is essentially a mask that is applied over the span of a gradient. It's typically used to make skies darker, like a neutral density filter, but I like to use it in other ways to add depth to your images and make them pop. So this is what the photo looked before, and this is after applying one of the free presets that you can find in the link in the description below. So as it is, the image by itself looks quite flat. So what you can do with the gradient filter is dragging it from the floor above and then reducing the exposure, increasing the clarity. That makes it look like the subject is further in the shot rather than just being flat like so. And so the reason that you would add clarity, because without clarity, if you were just to reduce your exposure, you would see this area gets dark and that's kind of what we want, but you kind of lose some detail in that space. And so by adding clarity, you kind of bring a little bit of that detail back. So it doesn't really just look like someone just made that section darker. Instead, the dark area looks like it's part of the image, therefore making it more three dimensional. And finally, the brush. Pretty forward whatever you highlight with the brush is what will be affected by your adjustments when you use the brush there are a few settings that you can change the size which you can increase with the slider or using your mouse's scroll wheel the feathering just affects how soft the outline of the brush is but the most important feature of the brush is auto mask so auto mask is very similar to the selection tool on photoshop it just creates a mask similar to what you have been selecting and it's great when you're brushing around straight lines and angles now that you know how the brush works here are some ways that I like to use it to make my photos pop. The first would be to add highlights to an image. A common example for portraits would be to highlight the eyes of the subject. In this example, here is the portrait before any edit. And with the brush, after highlighting the eyes and slightly increasing the exposure, saturation and sharpness, now the eyes pop out a little more. And then if you combine it with a radial filter, you can get this really nice look. And this is a common thing that a lot of headshot photographers do, although I know there are more complex ways to do these. And lastly, the other way that I like to do it is just by simply highlighting whatever subject and bringing them out a little bit more. You can see in this example here, because the subject is backlit, his face is in the shadow. And even after color grading the shot and adding some gradients, the subject is still a little bit dark. So what I did is I highlighted him, increased the exposure a little bit, the highlights, but more importantly, the sharpness. He now pops out a little bit more. It makes it easier for your eyes to go towards the subject. So that's how I add more depth to my photos using filters. If you want to see me do a POV photography shoot, check this video out here and I'll see you in the next video.